G'day Bomber fans, we have a big, big game coming up. We have to travel to everybody's favourite construction site, Cadinia Park, and face up to the Cats. It's a huge game for our season. We have a huge opportunity to really prove a point here. It's a big week, which means a big round preview. But first, we have some votes from last game to get through. It is a very even tally. We both have merit up top, rightfully so. Um, but I found it hard to pick two players after that, and you guys did as well. There were so many votes for different players. 15 different players received votes from you guys. That's how well we played as a team. And here is the tally. Merritt, the clear standout. He is winning this thing now. Six more votes to him. Parrish and Martin move up to be in the top three together. Still lots to play out for the podium spots, so keep up the votes. So the DeLong Cats, a team we do not like to play. We, of course, lost to them earlier in the year in an old-fashioned MCG uh, shootout when Wiedemann kicked five. Stringer went sicko mode. But at Cadinia, well, we rarely play there, for starters. We obviously face them during COVID. Um, but aside from that, it must be nearly 20 years since we last played them. I don't even remember then. It's always a ground that faces the Cats though, that's the thing about Geelong, they are 8th right now, but if they were to play Collingwood or Port Adelaide at Gdynia, you wouldn't count them out. They love a skinnier ground and it doesn't bode well for us. We like space, we like to spread, we like to utilise patches of open area to progress uh, down the ground from defence. It's it's how we play and it's a lot harder to do that at Gdynia Park. I don't know who knows about this or not, but G or GMHBA is width-wise the smallest in the league and length-wise one of the longest, which means it's, as I said, harder to progress the ball down the field and easier to defend counter-attacks, so we will have to find other ways to score because that is usually how we do so. The good news is we had variety in our most recent game against Adelaide. We had the Crows spent in the midfield early. We locked the ball in our forward line through pressure, but the difference between Adelaide at Marvel and Geelong at Cadinia is stark. This is a mountain we have to climb on Saturday night. Adelaide was just a little hill, especially because we are so unfamiliar with the ground we are about to play at. We rarely play on anything like it. We have played most of our games at the MCG this year, which is a fat, fat stadium, so to find new ways to score, it starts from the contest. You look at both these teams on paper, Geelong look like they can bully. We are a young, small midfield, and yes, we took it up to Port and we smashed the Crows early, so that does give me hope, but there is always the chance of a Dangerfield or an Atkins, a midfield bull just going to work and making life hard for us. That's the thing about the Cats. A lot of their players can do that. Duncan, Tui, Blixarves, their midfield showed what it can do against North, even against us earlier in the year. Sure, it's not what it used to be, but it's still capable of winning a clearance count and winning it well. Their forward line gives me nightmares. That game from earlier in the year when we were missing Laverty and Hawkins kicked seven or eight goals. Cameron kicked three or four and the latter there is returning from concussion. He's going to be fit. Uh, Stengel has started kicking goals again. Brian Myers is set to break the goal assist record for a season. They have some serious firepower down there which we know well too much. We conceded 19 marks inside 50 against them and 20 goals. Their defense is a funny one. On paper it's elite. You've got Tom Stewart who I rate as the best general defender of the last four to five years. Uh, Radigalia is great. Uh, Henry Henry, Guthrie, De Koning are big at their best, but it can be leaky and they don't do too much from defence. They won't want the ball down there as much as we will because we don't mind the ball in our defence. We generally score quite well from there, but they have the second least rebound 50s in the league. We have the second most. Across the board, Geelong are a good team. They won the granny last year, so of course they are, but even now with players retired and injured, they are still a threat. They are favourites to win this game. So Bomber fans, how do we win this game of footy? What do we need to do to take down the Cats at their home ground and cement a spot in the eight. Well, it starts from the midfield. It is hard to discount how important the contest is. We need to get on top with center clearances like we did against the Crows because we looked really dangerous and at Cadinia it's important. It's going to be a contested game. That is just a fact, especially because there may be a bit of rain, uh, no roof, windy conditions maybe. It could even be a bit scrappy, so territory is crucial. Even if it was a perfect night, no breeze, no wind, it's all about territory. We need the ball in our forward half. I said this against the Crows. It's even more important here. We really need our midfield to be smart. We are so poor. It's stoppage clearances and I'm afraid this game will open up through them because of the lack of pure ruck talent or well, not talent talent's not the right word I'll say pure ruck size on our side because Nick Bryan who's coming in for Andrew Phillips will be going up against a much stronger Reese Stanley I doubt Bryan has much of an impact so our mids need to be defensively orientated as a team we need to be defensively orientated it's going to be hard to stop them from getting territory from stoppages especially this means that the first disposal out of a stoppage is crucial it's going to be really interesting to see how we deal with that and once the ball is in our forward 50. We need to be hot like we were against the Crows. This is how I think we win the game. Forward pressure. It's what helped GWS beat the Cats at Cadinia early in the year. They had 22 tackles inside 50 to 4. That forward pressure is really important against Geelong because they have such a tall defense. They have five players over 190 centimeters down there. We have players like Guelphy, Menzi, and Snelling who are tiny compared to them. It's not a bad thing. We have pace down there. Pace to run down, to chase. We have a little mosquito fleet compared to their defense, so we need to use that. I want to see Guelphy having the 
same impact he had against the Crows. I want to, I want that Menzi and Snelling uh, tackling pressure. I want to see Stringer dangerous on ground level. He's a big player, a really important one for me. For us to be dangerous on ground level, though, our key forwards need to be big. I don't want them kicking bags. I don't want them clunking mug. Well, obviously, I do, but I'm not expecting them to do that. Uh, Wiedemann and Wright could go goalless and still have an impact if they bring the ball to ground in the right areas. Because, as I said, it's a bloody tall defense, a bloody tall Geelong defense. Uh, if it's on ground level, it favors us. Snelling, Guelphy, Menzi are great pressure players. Perkins and Hobbs are crafty around the goals as well. They won't be able to keep up with us deep in defense if the ball hits the ground. And of course, our defense. This was the big issue last time, having BZT on Hawkins. It was brutal. He was bullied all day. Ridley did a better job on him when he played on him, but he may not even be playing this week. We will most likely see Zerk Thatcher play on Jeremy Cameron and Laverde play on Hawkins now that he's actually fit. It's crucial we do not let them bully us here again because they destroyed us from center clearance goals last time. They ended up just having every forward leave the 50 and letting Hawkins bully BZT one-on-one. -on -one. It was not fun to watch. We need to give whoever is playing on Hawkins some help. What we would have done in the past is through Langford or Setterfield down back. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something similar if their forwards begin to get on top. Any danger players for them? Of course there are plenty. There's Tom Hawkins, Jeremy Cameron, Paddy Dangerfield, Mitch Duncan. I think Brian Myers is a great ball user. I think Tom Atkins is really underrated. But the danger players for me, the real ones, are Reese Stanley and Mark Blixars. They can have an impact with our undersized ruck stocks. Nick Bryan going up against two strong bodies like that is not ideal. I think they have us covered there, so it's going to be a real worry for us with those two players. Speaking of Nick Bryan, time for some possible team news, starting with them. They should welcome back Jeremy Cameron from a, a lengthy concussion. It was a horrible knock uh, the other week. Unfortunately for us, that's about it, really. I doubt they make any changes after that big win against the Roos. For us, there are some worries. For starters, Jordan Ridley will probably miss the game with bone bruising to his knee. Sam Draper is injured still. Andrew Phillips is suspended. Redmond was clearly sore, but there are going to be some forced changes. I think we see Baldwin come in for Ridley for height, unless we back in Kelly or Redmond if fit as a third key. And then we bring in Hind. I don't know. It's hard to do against Geelong, though. We'll see uh, Nick Bryan come in for sure for Andrew Phillips. Wiedemann will stay in uh, to be the second ruck. And aside from that, no real changes are needed after a win that good. It's going to be interesting selection-wise, but time for the real question. Who wins this game? I think we can win. I think we're good enough to win, but without Phillips or Draper on a ground that warrants territory, I just seeing them getting the ball down there and more. I think they play this ground so well. They are a good footy side. I reckon Geelong get the job done. It's a big test for us to see how we compete against them, but I think Geelong by 18 points, three goals. Uh, let me know what you think down below, but that's that. Video done. Like, subscribe, and a quick word from Manscaped. Bomber fans, I like my balls smooth, and how do I keep them smooth? With Manscaped. You too can have smooth balls and the best body grooming gear if you head over to manscaped.com, buy whatever you want, and enter the discount code EverythingEssendon20 for 20% off, plus free shipping. Cheers, Don's fans.